Good morning and welcome to worship on this third Sunday in the season of Lent. It is always so good to have you worshiping with us this morning. From wherever you are this morning, we're grateful that you are here with us. A few quick announcements before we jump into worship this morning. Uh, It is the season of Lent, and so with that season comes Lenten practices. One of those practices is meeting weekly for devotion and prayer. So I want to thank everyone who joined me this morning at 9.30 a.m. on Zoom for that Lenten devotion. We will continue that through this season every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. I'll send out information each Monday about that week's materials and with the Zoom information for the Sunday meeting. So again, it's never too late to join. You don't have to join all of them, but please pop in and pray with us and discuss scripture with us. We'd love to have you join us. During the season of Lent, we are also hosting our midweek Lenten services. We have in-person service every Wednesday evening here in the sanctuary at 6.30 p.m. If you'd like to come in person, We do ask that you sign up online in advance so that we can accommodate everyone who'd like to participate. We are also live streaming those services on Facebook. Uh, So you can go to our Facebook page and right there at 6.30 p.m. you'll be able to participate in the service. That service will stay up on our Facebook page. So if you can't get to it at 6.30, you can come later and worship with us. We have some exciting things happening in our community together. We have First Communion coming up, and we do have some youth who are participating this year. Uh, If you'd like to have your child participate, uh, there's no age limit. As long as you feel that they're ready, we'd love to have them join us. Uh, We will meet in the social hall at 5.30 p.m. this Wednesday, March 10th. Then two weeks later, we'll meet again for some more instruction, and then we'll meet on Maundy Thursday to participate in celebrating their first communion. So please reach out to me if you'd like more information or if you'd like to participate with us. Since our services are pre-recorded, we missed someone in our prayers for this morning. So we'd like to add Evelyn Hainel, uh, who is in the hospital, to our prayers for this morning. We'll be praying for her and her family as she recovers. Now I'd like to update you all on Neighbors, Inc. Last week, I think we had 107 boxes of pancake mix. And by the time we got it all together to take down to Neighbors, we had 136 boxes of pancake mix. So again, thank you so much. That is so close to our goal of 150. So I'm going to give you guys credit anyways. You did it. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your continued support. And speaking of Neighbors, Inc., we are now in full swing of Minnesota Food Share Month. And this year they've asked us for monetary donations so that they can purchase food at a higher quantity than we can at grocery stores. So what we're encouraging you to do is to donate uh, in denominations of 10. And those $10 donations will equal one bag. Uh, And those donations, again, will go off to Neighbors, Our goal is to collect 150 bags. And again, all of that will go to neighbors. You can donate online on our website, or you can bring in or send in a check. Uh, If you do write a check, please put Neighbors, Inc. or Minnesota Food Share Month in the memo line. Again, thank you so much for stepping up this year and really helping out Neighbors, Inc., who serves our community. Today, right after worship, at 11 a.m., we will have our congregational annual meeting. This will be hosted on Zoom, and hopefully you've already received the email with all of the information of how to log in to that meeting. We really encourage you to join us. We'll have some prayer and devotion, look through the reports, uh, and again, reflect on last year and in prayer and hope, look at what next year will bring us. So again, we hope that you join us this morning. And last but not least, a big thank you. Thank you to Mariah Marshinki for being our reader this morning. Thank you to Chris Garza for being our assisting minister. 
And a thank you, as always, to Paul Dunlop, not just for putting this together, but for helping us uh, make our Wednesday evening live streaming possible. Again, it is the body of Christ that comes together to make all of this happen, all in the name of Jesus. So let's take a moment of silence to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with continue with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion.
fountain of living water. Pour out your mercy on us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and the power of God, your sins are forgiven. And God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, through your Son you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. For the message about the cross is foolishness for those who are perishing, but to us who who are being saved, it is the power of God, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness for ge- to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. It's time for our children's message. So I invite all of the children of God to come a little closer to the screen so we can hear about what Jesus Christ has to tell us today. This morning, I've got another challenge for you. In the picture this morning, I've placed a bunch of crosses. Now, do you guys know what a cross is? So it looks like this. I wear one every time I worship and preach here on Sunday mornings, right? Maybe you guys even have a cross at your house somewhere, or when you get baptized, we often give you a cross or on your confirmation, right? So if you recognize those, I want you to take a second. You can even pause if you need to, but I'll give you a few seconds and see how many crosses uh, you can find in this picture. Now again, this one counts as one, so you've already got one. Now see how many more you can find. Hopefully you're counting, but I'll give you a hint. There's a couple right here. Maybe some on this side. You guys finding any? give you just a few more seconds to count. All right. So you can keep counting through all of this if you haven't found them all, but I want you to hold up fingers to represent how many crosses you found. Did you maybe find four? Which is pretty good, but maybe you did even a little bit more searching and you found eight. What do you guys think? How many fingers do you have up? What if I told you there is one more cross than you have fingers? 
So 10 plus one more, there are 11 crosses in this picture. Now, as I continue talking, if you haven't found all 11, I encourage you to try and search and find all 11. But I brought all of these crosses into this picture today because in 1 Corinthians, which is our Bible reading that we just heard, Paul talks about the cross, right? Paul talks about how this symbol, the cross, to some people is kind of silly and foolish, right? Why would Christians, people like you and me, people who worship God, why would we have crosses that we wear on our neck, that we put up on our walls in our homes? Why would our worship space be filled with crosses? Do you guys know why we use the symbol of the cross? Well, it's because it reminds us of Jesus, right? That cross reminds us of Jesus because Jesus loved us so much that Jesus died on that cross, right? So we always put up the sign of the cross, and you might even see me in worship make that sign of the cross because it reminds us of how much Jesus loves us. And to some people, that might seem kind of silly or foolish. But to us, it is the power of God. It's the love of God for you and me and all people. So I encourage you guys this week to be on the lookout for the cross. See if you can find it somewhere in your home. Even if you're out driving or playing with friends, see if you can find the cross anywhere. Maybe at the park or out in your backyard, you might find the symbol of the cross. And again, remember that that is a sign that God loves you. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for the cross. We thank you that it reminds us of your power and your love and your grace for us and for this entire world. Open our eyes this week to see your cross everywhere we go. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, amen. Our gospel this morning comes from John, the second chapter. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle, He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out and stop. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this. Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, 
this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. God of all creation, we give you thanks for creating this entire world, for giving each and every one of us life and bringing us to this very day. We thank you for waking us up this morning, gathering us to worship, to hear your word, to sing, and to be nourished at your table. Bless us this morning as we encounter Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Now it has been so nice to see the sun shining this past week. It's been refreshing to have temperatures getting warmer, to see that snow and ice build up, melting away. Our days are even getting longer and longer. And with this change in weather brings us the hope of spring. And with the hope of spring comes... Now, I know somebody said it with me, spring cleaning, right? I know you're all just super excited to do your spring cleaning this season, right? It's that time of year when we put away our winter gear, we trade our snow boots for our flip-flops, our snow pants for our shorts. We put away the snow blower and bring out the lawnmower. Right? It's that time of year that we remove those storm windows and put up screens. And we get to those pesky cleaning projects that have been hibernating all winter long. Now, since we're in the comfort of our own homes this morning, we can be honest. How many of you have a catch-all drawer in your house? Right, that drawer that has pins and coins and cords, unopened junk mail, screwdrivers, and of course that old soy sauce packet that you're never going to use. Now if we want to be even a little bit more honest, how many of us don't just have a catch-all drawer, but we also have a catch-all closet? Maybe even a catch-all room or basement, or garage, right? Over time, we tend to collect and gather things, and they add up quickly, and they begin to clutter our lives. Now, Luther Memorial Church is no different. We have a couple of closets that are full, but over the past few years, our back office, or our supply closet, has become our church catch-all. Now this room is supposed to be for storing office supplies like envelopes and staples, but it has become the final resting place of empty boxes, of cork boards and used poster board, of calculators that don't even work anymore, electronic keyboards, pins and stickers and buttons from past projects. This room here at church has become so full and cluttered that it's hard to find anything that you're looking for. So in the spirit of spring cleaning, last week we took on the project of cleaning and organizing this space. Now a huge thank you to Mariah, our office administrator, and now that space is not only clean, but it's organized and properly labeled. There's something so refreshing of completing that cleaning project. When you finally clean and clear out the clutter, 
you get a new sense of clarity. Well, in today's gospel reading, that is exactly what Jesus does as he cleanses the temple. Now, this is a significant encounter that's found in all four of our gospels. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they all place this encounter at the end of Jesus' ministry as a catalyst for his arrest and his crucifixion. But John takes a different approach, and John places this encounter at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. This difference in where the Gospels place this encounter of Jesus cleansing the temple, it suggests that John is trying to communicate something different about Jesus and the temple. Well, in this encounter, it's Passover is right around the corner, which is a major festival and celebration in the Jewish community. It's a time every year when they remember that God saved God's people from slavery in Egypt. And it's tradition for Jews to travel to the temple in Jerusalem during this Passover season. So Jesus and his disciples, they enter the temple and the preparations that are going on. Now Jesus sees this scene, and it might sound odd to you and me, but it's exactly what happens when you're preparing for Passover. There are merchants selling animals. There are people bartering and trading. Individuals seeking out a priest to complete their ritual sacrifice. Money changers are changing money so that people can pay their temple tax. Now this scene, at its core, is not much different from what Luther Memorial Church or any other congregation would look like as we prepare for Easter. If we think about Easter's of the past, we have groups decorating the sanctuary, bustling and hustling around, We have musicians rehearsing for all of the worship services as we hear different instruments and voices singing throughout the church. And of course, we have cooks in the kitchen cracking eggs and preparing for that Easter breakfast. This is why Jesus' reaction is so surprising. Because the temple is business as usual But Jesus enters this very normal scene, and Jesus begins to rage. He creates a whip out of cord. He drives out the animals and the merchants. He pours out the money of the money changers, and he overturns their tables. Those who witnessed this scene are so shocked by Jesus' actions that they ask him, by what sign or authority do you do this? Jesus gives them two reasons for his reaction. The first, Jesus says, stop making my father's house a marketplace. See, the temple was a place to encounter God because it was a place not of commerce, but of worship. That marketplace and that tradition of bartering and trading and changing money, it cluttered and it distracted from worshiping God. The second reason Jesus gives is that Jesus' body is the true temple. Jesus says that the temple will be destroyed and he will raise it up in three days. Jesus, of course, is not talking about this temple that's taken 46 years to put together, but of his own body. You see, God is not contained in a physical building. God is not contained in a temple in Jerusalem. God is in the flesh in Jesus. And now God can actually be encountered 
anywhere across the entire globe. In Jesus, God is uncontained and on the move. This is what's so significant about how and why John recalls Jesus cleansing the temple. Because God is not limited by buildings or structures. Jesus is the presence of God, and in Jesus, God is with us. That's the central claim of John's entire gospel. Word became flesh, God with us. This truth about God is something we have all been forced to experience this year. This month, it has been a full year since we have gathered in this sanctuary for Sunday morning worship. It's been an entire year since we gathered in the place where we encounter God in music, in scripture, at the Lord's table, and in greeting and being with one another. But God is not limited by buildings and structures. God is not contained in the four walls of Luther Memorial Church. Jesus is God's presence. And Jesus will encounter you wherever you are. Now I know that this year has been challenging for many of us. But the promise is that the presence of God has never left your side this entire year. So I ask you a question this morning. How have you encountered God this year? Now this is not a rhetorical question. I truly want you to take a moment, then say out loud to me across the screen or to those gathered with you, Take a moment and answer, how have you encountered God this year? Now, if you're still sharing, feel free to pause and share with one another and then come back. I hope that you can see that God has encountered you in some way, shape, or form throughout this year. Because God is always with you. God is always with you, but much like our church supply closet, much like our catch-all drawers, and much like the temple in John's Gospel, our lives often get cluttered and distract us from experiencing the presence of God. So this week I have a challenge for you to spring clean your mind and your heart by taking time each and every day to ask yourself that same question. How have I encountered God today? Now, you can do that in the morning when you wake up or at night right before you go to bed. You can write in a journal or draw. You can call a friend to discuss, or maybe even as you sit down for dinner with one another. How have I encountered God today? I promise you that no matter how difficult your day is, God is with you. God is uncontained, and in Jesus, God's presence, God is with you always. Amen.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God of mercy, be with the people around the world who are struggling with the coronavirus pandemic and especially with those who are feeling the effects of economic and social inequality at this time. In particular, be with the people of Argentina, the United Evangelical Lutheran Church of Argentina in Uruguay, San Lucas Congregation in Gran Borg, and San Pablo Congregation in San Miguel. Remind us that we are all united in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, we pray for the families who are experiencing hardships or loss as a result from the long power outages caused by recent winter storms. Please be with our government officials as they work to prevent this from happening again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, bless all of our students, our teachers, and school staff as schools begin to reopen. We also pray for God's health and healing for Connie McAllister of Sunshine, Kay Kessel, Leon, Bernice, Marlene A-Strike, Marlies Cornelison, Maria and Jeremy, Don Johnson, Irene, Justin, Bobby, Debbie, Joel, Liz, Colette, Ken, Dan, and Kim. We pray God's strength and encouragement for our homebound, Doug and Marley's, Ruth, Dorothy, Janie, Gloria, Luther, Joan, Claudia and Stephen, Millie, Carol, Joanne, Margaret, Doris, and Bev. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of God's peace with each other. Jesus to walk with 
with me. Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. Let us pray. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal, that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He broke it, he gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As you partake in communion and as you eat the bread, hear these words. This is the body of Christ given for you. As you drink the juice or the wine, hear these words. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord. You are what God created you to be. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor, God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God.